We've got a very complex water feature going on here. And the idea is that water is coming out of all of these urns. And we've got one, two, three, four, five, 43, four, five, six, six ish? Seven ish? Emphasis on the ish. Yeah, ish. All of that water is supposed to feed this waterfall and a little waterfall here and here. Which in high insight, as I'm thinking about it and we're at the last hour, might be an enormous amount of work for very little reward. But I know you guys want to see it come to life. So that's why I'm doing it right now. Well, everyone, it is the final day out here in the Sandbox Studio, and we stayed late last night. You guys saw us get the bridge in. guys are back which is awesome huge lifesaver so they're over there still working on the patio we've got so much work left to do we got Dan and Luis working on the intake area this is that in pond skimmer where all the water is gonna flow down into this area so what they're doing is they're gluing all these bricks together but they're gonna cut the liner out from on top of the aqua box inside oh nice job Vanna nice job yeah that's it girl yeah you oh man you did so good on that you need a raise after that so we're gonna cut the liner out right there and then all the water will infiltrate down into that area right there. It's important to keep in mind the flow rate of the pumps. That's why we enlarge this thing just a little bit bigger than an actual square. It's more rectangular. We wanted to make sure that we had enough lineal feet all the way around to compensate for all of the gallons per hour that is going to be drawn into that area. We got the rest of our liner foamed up along the walls, all that stuff. We're gonna continue to work on building this little seat wall over here so we can put that to bed so that they, the Nunez Nursery and Landscaping, can finish off butting up all this stuff and we're not in their way. So trying to get that done. Then we have Jack over here along with Steven working on the insane amount of plumbing that's going in here. So it's going to be a spider webbed mess in here, but we have literally hundreds and hundreds of dollars in fitting in here as well as pipe and all that stuff. It takes a lot of brain power to kind of think through this entire design, make sure that we get everything right. There's gonna be three different pumps responsible for pushing water over all 11 of these spheres as well as that fourth pump as an upflow. So Jack's gonna show you that here in a second but there is just an insane amount of work that has to be done in here. So I guess I should leave him alone. It would probably help him out. Anyways, we'll be right back. That's a lot of plumbing that we are doing right now that you will not see when we're done with this. So right now I went along and I measured our height that goes from the top of this down to the bottom to our floor. And that gave me our standpipe, which is right here. And so this is gonna go all the way down. It'll sit a little above this lip right here and that'll allow that water to percolate top of this fire feature on top of these to give it some fire to add an accent urns that are sitting off in that corner. So all 11 of these small, medium and large spheres are gonna have these fire features on top of it but right now we're going through and we have to hook up all three of these lines to all 11 of these spheres one of these lines i believe it's probably going to be this one right here it's going to just dump into this pooling area here and it's going to allow that push of water to come out of this entire area to give it that illusion it's like a deep stream all in here so we still have a lot of plumbing to do just in this small sphere we are going to have a three inch trunk line that's going to feed four spheres at a time so this three inch line is going to be feeding four of our spheres so this one in particular right here and this right here pretty much goes through all of them just the different size fittings but we're gonna have our sphere right here and then we're gonna have a three inch manifold which is right here this guy is gonna go in line with that three inch line there and it's gonna sit underneath this sphere and then we have these bushing fittings that fit inside of our 
three inch manifold. And then this allows us to shrink it down from three inch all the way down to one inch lines that are gonna be feeding our small spheres and then inch and a half lines that are gonna be feeding our medium and large spheres. So we have our one inch reducer and then that's gonna come down to our one inch ball valves that are gonna be sitting right after this reducer here. And that allows us to fine tune every single one of our spheres because we're gonna be pushing almost 9,000 gallons of water through each line and we need to be in control of it in each sphere. And then it, we come over here and this is our stand pipe and then it's gonna sit flush with the bottom of the floor and it's gonna come up and it's gonna be where the top of this is just above the lip down here and it's gonna sit just right there. And that's gonna allow us to have our fire feature sit flush with the top of our spheres, just like that. So the final product is gonna be just like that. Below the plumbing is gonna be disguised underneath the spheres. So I gotta do that through this one, that one, and all nine of those. Better get to it, we gotta get going. some behind the scenes to show you how we pull off the magic around here. So we've got all these used Christmas trees that were pitched by the homeowners here in Geneva, St. Charles area. And uh, just after the new year, we went out and collected, I don't know, 60 to 80 of them. And we are using them to landscape our display. So thank you, citizens, Christmas goers. That's what it's supposed to look like right there. So it should look like a lush evergreen forest all in throughout here. So they're creating a dense evergreen screen to prevent people in the shed from looking back this way and vice versa. People coming from the house going to the shed not being able to see all the way back in there. So just a little quick overview of what we're doing in here. Almost, almost done with the plumbing back in this sphere area. I'm gonna work on finishing this edge and through here so that the patio guys can finish what they gotta do. We're gonna work in a bunch of evergreens all around this post as well. So we'll get this all completely done and then I'm gonna really focus very heavily the rest of the afternoon on this area and through here to get that thing done. over there taping the lighting cables down so that they don't migrate up through the gravel. We want a nice clean look along the backside over here. You can hear the sound of gravel going on top of the liner. We got Steve right here. Looks like he's using a new approach to getting gravel on top of the liner rather than going underneath the bridge. He's just simply dumping it through the holes down or the slots in the bridge and seems to be working fine. So covering up everything in through here. We've got this whole section gravel. We've got lights in over here. Of course we had, we showed you earlier in the video, all the lights in the tops of the urns but we also want to have some underwater lights shining up on waterfalls highlighting the sides of the urns oh wait oh hi hey <laughs> who's that it's your loyal following on hey when you do recordings you always try to make sure there's as much background noise as possible they actually just started but yes oh, yeah that, that's the point we actually get a lot of comments on the views we how they sit. like that yeah that's why you have to yell okay <laughs> super loud i'm guessing you want to know what i'm doing here no i don't okay uh -huh. hey it's great seeing you guys we'll check in with you later <laughs>
Kitchen Jack's still working on plumbing. Definitely a full day venture, but we managed to pull Brian away from his normal stressful daily life, and we really needed your help, so. Chris, I don't always build ponds, but when I do. <laughs> So I kind of stuck you with the task of I know coming this. in. <laughs> I know this. It's the detail work, right? So it is. We've got one, two, three, four, five, 43, four, five, six, six-ish, seven-ish. Emphasis on the ish. Yeah, ish. All of that water is supposed to feed this waterfall and a little waterfall here and here, which in high insight, as I'm thinking about it, and we're at the last hour, might be an enormous amount of work for very little reward, but I know you guys want to see it come to life, so that's why I'm doing it right now. And I do, because yeah, that was that was my idea. Was I wanted to get the like water coming over through here? I was, so. I was loosely pointing at you at the same time. Okay. Right? All right. I appreciate that. <laughs> so in order for that to happen, we've got one rock that has established our water level in this pool over in here, which is this one. This big guy right here. Yep. Again, let me declutter. They, they, so once I've established that this is going to be the water level in the pool, yep. I take my level and I come across, and it's actually level. With with this rock and this rock. This is lying, but this bucket's in the way. <laughs> Okay, so it's a, closer to that. Yeah. But there's a high spot back there. If you look at the low areas in here, this, all the gaps that you see underneath yep. are where water's gonna come over. This is high back in here. So I've established that. Now I come back in here, put this this way, and it says my pool <laughs> needs to be basically that high. If I can get all my edges the same height as this rock, mm -hmm. I'll force all of the water that comes off of this urn, this big mama jamba over here, and a half of this one to come over this. And then we have a supplemental hose if we want more water to come over. That's one pool. Now all the water that comes off of this side, this side of this one and the back side of that one should feed that waterfall is the plan. So I've got to come in here. If you can see, you can't see, but I'll trust me that this side here is about a foot lower than this area over here. So what I'm doing now is building all of this up and I'm building all of this up with gravel. Of course, the gravel is not going to retain water or hold water, but I can build this up with gravel, then come over the top of it with what we call a bib liner and it'll get cut to fit right around here around the base of that urn around the base of this urn and around the base of this urn so when the water comes down these urns it'll not hit the gravel it'll hit that bib liner which is then sealed with foam at the joints pool up and then force over that side get it <laughs> <laughs> I know it seems complicated. We'll get this thing buttoned up and keep our fingers crossed and hope I get all the water to go that way. It sure would be embarrassing if I don't, huh? See you soon. <laughs> all right guys, so I'm working on the bib liner over in this area. And one thing a lot of people don't know about the foam is how much better it actually bonds to rock and gravel and liner and everything if you get a little wet. So we always take a big bottle like this, poke a little hole in the top. And if I just kind of spritz that down in an area like this and then come in with my foam gun you don't want it super wet but if i come in with that and then hit this with the foam the foam not only is going to bond better to the rock but it's going to cure a whole lot harder even after i'm done i'll come sometimes over the top and just lightly sprinkle it it really really loves that humidity and because we're in a warehouse that's as dry as can be we have to create our own get your canada dry spritz bottle and i promise you your waterfalls will turn out better <laughs> Well, it is about 9.30 on Thursday for us, and our goal was to have it finished by Thursday night, by tonight. I don't think we're gonna quite get there, but it's not for lack of, an, of effort, that's for dang sure. We bit off a lot, a lot with this project, but it looks absolutely outstanding and incredible, and all the other wonderful adjectives that I could be using right now. But we are super, super close. We're gonna grind out probably another hour or so, and then put in definitely a full day tomorrow between all the cleanup, the rest of the landscape, and finishing up a lot of the other things but there's been a lot of challenges on this project because we can't ever do anything easy it always has to be over the top so i think that led to just us not finishing our project by our deadline which is a bummer but it's not deflating because it looks absolutely fantastic like i said and i love the way it's turning out and holy crap are you guys gonna love it i know you're gonna love it so it'll be worth the wait but just wanted to check in give you some of my thoughts there anyways this is all foamed up ready to go jack and josh are taking over for brown Ryan, he finished up all the bib liners, we think. So should be good to go there. So they're just gonna gravel everything, get the rest of the lights in. And then over here, we've got Luis and Steve throwing a little bit of extra dirt back in here. We had to dig this all out in order to get this trough in, but this is the area down in here where we're kind of bib linering everything, creating these little pockets.
pockets because we want to drive water in between all of these spheres. I still have the back side to do over here. You can see we have lights already ran. I don't want to cover up the ball valves, so I've got them all strategically placed, hoping that there's not a whole lot of tweaking we need to do, but I'm going to go ahead and start buttoning the rest of this up where I can and hopefully be out of here in about an hour and then have a long day tomorrow and get it all ready for the party when the pond guy gets here. So wish us luck, okay? Thank you for that.